Welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks, the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. Hey, how about that weekend, huh? Record-smashing warmth yesterday. We got to 73 at the Youngstown Warren Airport on Sunday, breaking the record of 69 degrees pretty easily. Now, it came with a gusty wind, and uh, we had a gusty wind at times again today. But, of course, the big story today was the rain, the relentless rain, especially this morning and midday that caused a widespread flooding problems once again in some of the same areas that we had flooding problems just a, a few weeks ago. Here's a look at some rain gauges. Now it looks like we have kind of one wonky reading here at this gauge in uh, Brookfield, but otherwise all these look pretty reasonable to me. 1.54 in Boardman. I've had some reports of uh, almost two inches in the Canfield to Boardman area. 1.69 up on the roof here at WFMJ in downtown Youngstown. New Garden at 1.12 and uh, over in Mercer County some healthy amounts over here as well. Generally inch and a quarter to an inch and a half even inch and three quarters was a, a pretty good average it came down hot and heavy for a time this morning at the youngstown ward airport 1.71 was the official number for today bringing our monthly total to 2.21 that's a full inch and a half above average through the first week of march the records today 75 1983 also in the mid 80s we had a minus one for the record low on today's date all right so uh, that's the wrong, that's not the graphic I wanted to show you, but I'll show you it anyway. <laughs> uh, 1.71 here in Youngstown. New Philly had 1.3, Mansfield 1.63. Uh, Pittsburgh did not have quite as much. The corridor of heaviest rain was generally Columbus across I 71 uh, to just south and east of Cleveland and then up towards uh, the I 77 corridor and into Youngstown as well. All right, when we look at recent months, now we didn't have a particularly stormy stretch from November through January. Rain and melted snow giving us total precipitation trends here for the winter season. Now, of course, we had one of the wettest Octobers on record, but then it got very dry in November. December and January were nothing to write home about in the precipitation department, but since February 1st, it's been pretty stormy. We've had our ice events, we've had our rain events, we've had our uh, snow events, and uh, yeah, 1.5 inches above average so far in March after almost two inches more than average back in February. All right, you know, I, I hear it everywhere I go, and it, whether it be on social media or in real life, uh, people talking about the increase in flooding in our area in, in recent years. And, you know, it's certainly been noticeable around here. It is not restricted to our area, though. At our latitude, the impacts of climate change are more precipitation-focused than temperature-focused. Yes, it's getting warmer. Uh, our temperatures each month of the year, each season of the year, have increased in recent decades, but I think the increase in precipitation has been more impactful to day-to-day -to -day life in our region. So the days, these big ticket days, these days with one inch or more worth of rain, they've definitely increased in recent decades. When we talk about climate change, you know, this is the same thing I, I say all the time when we have these big weather events. Uh, you can't say this flooding event or that flooding event is because of climate change. Can't can't do that. Um, but we can say is that climate change increases the odds of those outcomes. So what in a non-warming world might be kind of a routine weather event has a higher chance now of becoming an extreme weather event. If you've been watching my videos and following me for for many years, you know the analogy I like to use is is baseball. Uh, back in the uh, 90s, when some of the big stars were on steroids, every home run they hit was not because they were on steroids. Some of those home runs would have happened anyway. Um, but because they were on steroids, because they were on performance-enhancing drugs, the odds of any one pitch being hit out of the park were higher. So that's kind of the analogy I like to use when it comes to climate change. All right, in addition to the rain today, we had a, a gusty line of showers that moved through this afternoon that produced a wind gust at the airport of 43 miles per hour. That was just before 3 p.m. And we had a 45-mile-per-hour gust on Sunday, so it's been a couple of very breezy, if not windy, days across the area. As a result of the uh, flooding that we had this morning, now the aerial flood advisories and flood warnings have been uh, discontinued, but we have river flood warnings now out for the Mahoning River near Youngstown, and also, no surprise, Eagle Creek near Braceville, southwestern Trumbull County. Eagle Creek is probably going to crest late tonight, uh, getting close to 12 feet. Now that's minor flood stage. Minor flood stage begins at 9.5 feet. Moderate flood stage does not, does not begin until 13.5 feet. It doesn't look like we'll see moderate flood stage. But still, 10.5, 11, and 11.5 feet, that's enough to uh, cause some problems for the homes 
right around Eagle Creek. Um, the Mahoning River at Youngstown will probably crest tomorrow. Right now it's barely in a minor flood stage at about 14 feet or so. It may crest at close to 15 feet before starting to recede. All right, uh, we did not have any uh, severe thunderstorms in our area. We had those gusty showers around mid-afternoon, but uh, severe thunderstorms have been occurring off to our east from uh, west central PA out into eastern parts of the Keystone State. In fact, a severe thunderstorm watch remains up for just north of Washington, D.C., up into Baltimore, into Philadelphia, up towards the Poconos. Several severe thunderstorm warnings are also out as of this recording at a little after 7 o'clock. Another big story today. There's been a lot of big stories in the weather world today. The falling temperatures. We spiked into the 50s, even 60s in some spots earlier on today, but we saw a 20 to 25 degree temperature drop in just a few hours late this afternoon and early this evening as winter has made a return. All right, pretty ho-hum Tuesday. A lot of clouds in the morning, maybe a flurry. Now this high kind of drifts across and is going to try to scour out the clouds some. It may take until pretty deep into the afternoon before we see uh, the sky brighten, but I, I think some of us will see the sun before the day is through, but then clouds will quickly roll back in tomorrow night. Now, this is an interesting little system on Wednesday. The models uh, did not show much for our area as recently as last night, but starting this morning, the models started to clue in on a little bit of a northwesterly uh, push with the moisture shield, so it looks like we're gonna get grazed just a little bit by this on Wednesday. Most of this is mid to late morning, probably winding down by early afternoon. And the farther north and west you go, the lower chances you have of seeing anything out of this. But I think uh, some parts of our viewing area, especially say, oh, just, just say Youngstown south and east, you have the best chance of seeing a period of wet snow or flurries. Now this is not gonna do much in the way of sticking because it's coming during the day in March and temperatures will be primarily above freezing, 33, 34, 35. Little slushy accumulations though on the grass, possible. If you happen to be doing some traveling on Wednesday, PA Turnpike, I-80 eastbound into Pennsylvania, conditions may be a little bit tough for a time in the higher terrain, especially out in central parts of PA. Then quiet weather for our Thursday. All right, let's talk about uh, the next, after Wednesday's system, the next little interesting bit of business. This is Friday night and into Saturday. A pretty potent cold front is heading our way. Might see a rain shower towards the end of the day Friday, but by Friday night, the air mass will be cooling. This is the European model I'm showing you. Clock times are over here. So by late in the evening Friday and into the overnight, I think it's snowing. Um, now, today's only Monday, so we're not going to talk about you know snowfall accumulations in our official forecasts, but will this be enough to be impactful? I think there's a decent chance of that. Will it be enough to shovel, uh, plow? certainly possible. Now what about the timing on this? Again, this comes in mid to late evening on Friday, and then it probably snows for most of the night. As we get into the daylight hours on Saturday, uh, the steadiest of the snow probably is pushing well to our east by mid-morning at the latest. So uh, out towards State College, Altoona, Johnstown, into the Finger Lakes up in New York and over towards the Poconos and northeastern PA, that's where the steady snow will be by lunchtime Saturday. For us, by lunchtime, it's probably light snow flurries, maybe a snow shower in spots. A little lake effect component will probably get involved in, in this uh, before Saturday afternoon is through, maybe giving us some additional accumulations, mainly in the secondary snow belt in, in Trumbull and Mercer. Also, a gusty wind. Look at these isobars packed together on Saturday. This is going to be a nasty day. I mean, temperatures mostly in the 20s, wind chills, single digits, and teens. What a contrast to this weekend we just got done with. It's going to be a, a harsh, harsh change coming our way. Now, again, I'm not going to you know, put a, official accumulations this early in the game in our forecast or anything. But here at the end of this video for the weather geeks out there, here's, you know, one product we like to look at. This is uh, off the European Ensemble modeling. The odds of three inches or more worth of snow from Friday night through Saturday. Some of these pale yellows and oranges, the legend down here at the bottom, yeah, maybe a 50-50 chance of, of a few inches or more worth of snow. Based on one run of one set of modeling, this is just one piece of information, but it is something that you know we can look at and talk about the possibilities that enough to measure, enough to shovel and plow, enough to be disruptive. If you happen to be out and about late Friday night, Saturday morning, I think that uh, that is uh, a distinct possibility. Of course, we'll be honing in on that Friday night and Saturday forecast in subsequent days. We'll have updates on Wednesday's little system as well and everything else you need to know on future editions of Weather for... Weather Geeks, thanks for watching this long video tonight. Enjoy the rest of your Monday night.